Isaiah chapter number 35, Habakkuk, the 35th book in the Bible. The wilderness, no life. Israel just wandered through and died. In a solitary place, lonely place, shall be glad for them. All right? Them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Desert does not blossom. Except for where you got oasis where there's a little water spot. But it doesn't say oasis, it says desert. It shall blossom abundantly. So just not, here's a rose, here's a pretty little section. Abundantly. And rejoice even with joy and singing. The desert, singing, happy, I mean, when was the last time you saw a desert singing and being happy? Or over here at the Sahara Desert to record it, it's singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. Lebanon has a whole bunch of trees. It's a forest. The excellency of Carmel. Carmel has vineyards. And Sharon, the mountains. And they shall see, oh, here we go, the glory of the Lord. And the excellency of our God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about the millennial kingdom. We're talking about the second advent in the Lord Jesus Christ. Deserts are going to be beautiful. And it's weird when you read about the millennium. Trees sing. Deserts sing. Everybody is singing. Everything is singing. I think the millennium reign of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to put Disneyland and their, their cartoons to shame. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I, I, I'm, I take it literal. I mean, I just take it as everything that God just created and just reaching out, singing praises to Jesus Christ, who is God, who is creator. Why not? Now I could be wrong. Strengthen ye the weak hand. And he did that in his first advent, but they gave him a cross. And confirm the feeble knee. Healing. Strength. Care. And even that, when the millennium is over. Satan rounds up an army of people. Isn't that man's nature? Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. All right, these are the Jews that are hiding in Sea of the Petra. They are fearing the Antichrist in that shadow of death. Wondering when the wrath of Satan will get them. And the word to them is, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Now, I think it's Revelation 19, but I never get, I'm not sure of the chapter. The Bible says, Mr. Jehovah Witness, and I hate to pick on you all the time, but, you know, I'm reading the Bible. It says the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, comes down, and it says in Isaiah chapter 35, your God will come with vengeance. He's coming with a sword in his mouth, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's God. How can you say he's not God? How can you proclaim that when you, when you must not read the scriptures? 
Even God with the recompense, He will come and save you. Jesus. Uh, let, 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 let. Jehovah saves. Friends, if you are listening to this and you are a Jehovah Witness, you need to get in the scriptures. You need to, never mind what they say, no matter what anybody says, no matter what I say, you need to get in the Holy Scriptures and read. You need to get out of the, uh, uh, the New World Trans... You need to get in a King James Bible. Because I'm not looking for a New World, I'm looking for New Jerusalem. And a New Earth. Only armies want a New World. And religion. He will come and save you. We're talking to the Jews. What's he going to save them from? The Antichrist. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. That's the first. Don't you see the, the first advent and the second advent just getting mixed? Well, yeah, he. he he came and he, look at all the blind people. Look at the leprosies he healed. And how come he didn't overturn Rome? Because of a comma. Because of a colon. Because of a period. One time he, he gets up in his whole time. He gets up and they hand him the book of Isaiah. He, he reads and he stops. I think he's at a comma. and gets the book back to him. And he says, this is everything that's fulfilled in the first advent. The rest of the passage will be. The, he doesn't say this, but the rest of the passage he doesn't finish. It's the second advent. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. John 20, verses 30 and 31. Just a beginning of a verse. That's not today. I mean, yeah, he can give eyesight to the blind. Yeah, he can give hearing to the deaf, but... Um, I can't ever remember her name. Fanny Crosby. She was saved, loved the Lord. Did he give her her sight? He gave her a spiritual insight that no one with eyeballs could see. And I heard one time that um, every one of her hymns, I am told, I haven't looked into it. I mean, there's so many you can check into. It. As far as all the hymns that are in the hymn, I am told she writes everything, or her main subject is about seeing Jesus. Anybody in the world would say, you fool, you can't see. Oh, yeah, I can. I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to argue with her. But I guarantee, I bet you she saw Jesus more than I do. I mean, even the the religious people of Jesus' time. One guy he healed, I believe, it was blindness. They called the guy, oh, "This is your son, who you said was blind." Man, come on! Then shall the lame man leap as a heart. That happened. Also happened in the Book of Acts with the apostles. Jews require a sign, and the tongue of the dumb sing. Earth Advent. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. That didn't happen. And I believe Ezekiel speaks about a river that flows out. And it may be from the throne. But I know at least the throne in, in glory, the waters flow out. And there's, there's a river that speaks about that it's going to be a, a healing river. Except for in the marshes. Then sh oh, very good. And the parched ground that's dried up, broken up, useless dirt. I don't know which is worse, parched ground or the ground of Florida. I don't know if you ever been to Florida. Florida is a full-time beach. We live five miles from the beach, and we still got our whole yard is sand. But this is Arch ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. 
and in the habitation of dragons. So what's going to be there? Dragons. The lizards? No, it, God knows what lizards is. He, he says dragons. Where each lay, sleep, lie down, rest, shall be grass and reeds and rushes. That's not a parched ground. The curse is removed off the earth in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Vegetation is growing everywhere. It's almost like the Garden of Eden. And and a highway shall be there. Wow, look at that highway. There'll be no cars, there'll be walking animals. And a way. Shall it, anyway, it shall be called, look at that capital T, the way. So what does Jesus say? I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. There it is right there. The unclean shall not pass over it. No wickedness. If you end up in wickedness, you're unclean. You're going to be cast in the lake of fire. We read that about the other night with the brimstone and all the birdies. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring man, the fools shall not err therein. There's no fools there. Fool in his heart that says there is no God. The fool doesn't fear God. The fool go back and, and, and study fools and listen to our proverb. Thirty-one chapters where only two times fool is a good thing. And all the rest. No lion. Our adversary the devil is Goes about as a lion seeking whom he may devour. I quote that verse. No lion shall be there on this highway. There'll be lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! No, we move the old mind. You know, if Dorothy would have got saved, she would have had a lot better than us. She had to go back home and, and it was all a dream. But I'm going to live this for a thousand years and live all glory with the Lord Jesus Christ permanently. Nor any ravenous, ravenous beast shall go upon it. There are, here's a road, a highway that you can walk that will go to the Lord Jesus Christ and there'll be no troubles, no, no animals to eat you, no robbers. You just walk to Jesus safely. Let the kids go on up. Let the elder people hang a little bit back and just it's a wonderful way. Shall go up there on it shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk therein. Or walk there. This is a highway to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a road going to Jesus. This is a road that no unsaved man, in other words, there's no unnecessary traffic on this road. Everybody's going one way, and that's to Jesus. And the conversation is not about baseball and fishing and all that. It's all about Jesus. Imagine those who've been there telling those who haven't been there yet, because there are going to be people born in millennia, telling them what it's like as they get there. Go here real quick. Here. Go to Hebrews real quick. I'm gonna you stay out for Hebrews real quick and it says Hebrews let me read you something about and then think about these people here. Alright, let me read you this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set down before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Imagine here you are, you're walking on the way, and you're looking unto Jesus. There he is. 
and you just walk as you get you getting there you're getting closer you're getting closer and getting closer to your savior who what did he said over here that uh the one who saved you now if that ain't gonna bring tears to your face and joy to your heart and you make me like you're gonna have a spiritual pee yourself I don't know what will It says in, in uh, the time that Ezra went back, that when they finally finished that temple, they were they were crying and they were and they were rejoicing. Those were those were those were crying because they remember the old temple. Those are rejoicing. They, they, here's the new temple. They never saw the old temple. Here are people who have seen the Lord Jesus Christ and just, oh, we we have to go away. We have to go back to our. But it's time to go back up. Yay! And those who have never seen Jesus, heard about him, seen the you know the, the twelve apostles of the Lamb, seen all those that are you know that suffered with him during the church age reigning, and here we all go together. What a thing. Redeemed. I'm redeemed. And the ransom of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with song and everlasting joy upon their heads. Let me tell you what 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 the devil's counterfeit is. Say what the devil. And, and if you live anywhere, you know it's true. Unless you're out in a boondock somewhere. I'll tell you what the devil's uh, devil's counterfeit. Is. Boom! 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 Da, 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 da. That junk that's coming out of the of the rate of the car stereos. That is the devil's counterfeit. You wait to when the when the I, a Christian will have no more pain. He is married to the Lord Jesus Christ. Though his tears will not be wiped away yet. That don't happen after Revelation 20. But there he is. There is his Savior. He is completely sinless. And they have reigned with the, for the land and have suffered for the land has been given a city or cities. He's got his crown. He's been rewarded. I don't know about those who don't get crowns. Sorry about that. Here is a nation that has been, oh man, just chased by Satan since Abraham and Agar. The most wickedest ruler ever to be in the world has been cast into the lake of fire. Satan has been put into chains. Here is the thousand year millennial reign of Lord Jesus Christ. The curse is removed. Children are walking kitty cats, and the kitty cats are lions. A boy brings a grizzly bear. Mama's laying her baby by snakes. Jesus Christ is in Jerusalem, reigning on David's throne. There is the temple. There are the, all the Levites, and they know who they are. The desert breaks out. Beautiful. It says, it, it said rose, right? All right, rose. You give a rose to your sweetheart. You say, 12 roses, I love you. 12 roses, I'm sorry. She picks up those roses. Ow! Mm, got thorns, sharp ones. It's very beautiful. She looks at it. It's got beautiful colors. It smells just good. But that rose is under the curse of Genesis 3. Jesus said, I am the rose of Sharon. Now Jesus is sinless without no curse. Can you imagine what that rose in the, in the desert is going to be when the curse is removed? And there are no thorns and a perfect uh, fertilization and proper watering and proper sunlight. Can you imagine what that one rose is going to look like? 
And with that, the curse being removed. Can you imagine the voice of these people going on the highway just listening to them sing? You imagine the land ringing out, and, the, and, and it said, and it said, verse 2, And it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with the joy and singing. You're walking, you know, maybe it's the echo of the people, I don't know. But they're walking through this once it was once a wilderness and desert. It's beautiful as anything can be. The children are picking all the flowers for mom they can pick, and, and when they pick a flower, another one shows up. Mom has now got two tons of, of flowers from all her children, begging them not to pick any more. And she is rejoicing in her children and her husband and, and the families and all, everybody. They, they, they come up to the 12 apostles of the land. They come up to these born-again Christians, and they just get together and just start singing to the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone, I don't think there's any bad singing in the millennium. Can't you just picture this? I, I, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what another devilish thing would be on this event. I, and I know there's no singing, but how about a parade? You know, they just bank up all the different music bands and that. How about that with the Lord Jesus Christ? Here we're all come. We're just going up. Singing. Praising the Lord Jesus Christ. And all the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Because we are rejoicing about the Jesus Christ. And they're rejoicing because it's about Jesus Christ. How can you describe that? And there's no death, and there's no pain on this road. Illustration Jesus gives about a, about a guy, he's walking down the road, and thieves beat him up, leave him half dead. It's not going to happen here. The priest passed on, the Levite passed on, that mean wicked Samaritan yeah. here the priests are together here the Levites are together and here the the the, 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 this, what the hell is name? Samaritans are all together there's no cursing there's no wickedness The little boys are playing with the girls the girls are playing with the little boys and there's no cooties among the girls and this you know, little girls are gathering flowers to, to bring to Jesus. Little boys are grabbing frogs and whatever they can grab to bring to Jesus. And then when they get there, the disciples won't give Jesus our... He'd be picking up the children, sitting them on his knees, bouncing them on their knees. And there's all the possible, hey, the glory to God. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Did I read that right? Isn't that where the crown of thorns went upon Jesus? Upon his head? Didn't I read in Revelation about Satan and the Antichrist have is a dragon with ten heads. That one of the places was the mark was to be on the forehead. Now here are a bunch of people giving their heads to the Lord Jesus. They were losing their heads in the guillotine in the tribulation period. Now their heads are for the Lord Jesus Christ. They shall attain joy and gladness. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And it don't say when the dosage is over, oh, it all comes back to you take another pill. It doesn't say when the high is done and then to, to you light up another one. 
It doesn't say until, you know, you throw up the next morning and then, you know, get that headache going and, that, and you open up another can. This is free. This is God. This is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. The fruit of the Spirit is flowing through the people in the, in the millennium. You want to have a revival? Have the fruit of the Spirit flowing through the congregation of the church without the nonsense. Truly dedicating themselves to God. What a wonderful time it's going to be that we can't even fathom. I mean, even, even if this was today, right now, you get some stupid thought in your head that would blow, that would blow the whole thing. Your eyes will look at something that you weren't supposed to look at and blow the whole thing. You will say something to somebody that will get them angry, or they'll say something to you and get you angry. And listen, that's human nature. That's not here. That is not here. And you can't say, listen, Israel saw God, Exodus 20. They saw the wonderful works of God from Genesis to Isaiah. They saw Jesus Christ. Though they did, they could have drew a painting of Jesus. But without the redemption, without the ransom of God, without the Holy Spirit, there is no joy. I have been, since I've been saved, I have been in many situations of trouble, trials, and tribulations. And I have people just wonder and even ask me, how are you doing? And in those trials, and it's like, doing what? You're taking it so good. You're taking it so calm. If that was me, I, I'd break down and be like, I'm reading my Bible. I'm loving the Lord. Going to church. Doing what? Doing what what's, is there supposed to be a problem? We're seeing the fruit of the Spirit in this chapter by, again, by the redeemed. I'm redeemed. I've been ransomed. I have been bought with a price, the precious blood of God, Acts 20, 28. I am doing what God wants me to do, and there's nothing but peace, joy, long-suffering. Even when I do sin, God has allowed my conscience to be alive and not to be seared to repent and get right and keep serving and the curse is still around me I think True Bible believing born again Christians love the Lord. I think this, in chapter 35, I think there's going to break out and there's, there's spiritually pee their pants all done and rejoicing. And he's just going to. What other time can you just let it go? And nothing be, for the born again Christian, nothing be wrong. No matter what you think, no matter what you say, will never be wrong. And it'll be always worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll know every proper hymn. You won't know the bad hymns. Every proper hymn, and even your own heart, you'll be making a melody and singing to the Lord. Anytime, every time, all the time. And nothing will be said, and nothing will ever be improper. Everything you say will be proper all the time. Even Peter will get the victory over that one. Everything he said will be right. 
all the time. You can't describe the millennium. It's too wonderful. And that's the millennium. I think Pierce, uh, John, yeah, I'm gonna go through all the apostles. Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3 if you can't understand earthly things, the millennium, if I can't explain the millennium, I far can't explain what glory is gonna be like. I mean, in New Jerusalem, there are plumbers that are saved, they're not gonna need to fix pipes. Nothing's ever gonna break in New Jerusalem. And it will be forever and ever and ever and ever without time all about Jesus. There will be no pain, no sorrow, no self-pity, no envy, none of that stuff ever. I can't explain it. What a wonderful thing is going to be in the millennium. And then when the Jews are properly worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ like they should be. That's perfect. And you know what? When a born again believer is worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And all the Jews are worshiping. Let's find it again. The one that will save you. So the Church A saints are worshiping Jesus saved. Jehovah saved. The Jews in the millennium are worshiping Jehovah saved. Jesus saves. And when you get the congregation of the born again Bible believers and the Jews strike up the car, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Don't you tell me that puts a smile on God's heart. And if God got a smile on his heart, the cherubim are got a smile on their heart. All the angels in heaven are got a smile on their heart. The 24 elders are smiling, and Satan is down there groaning. Just let me get out of here. That's, that's one day. That's two day. Taking his claws and striking the walls. When you got the church age and the Jews singing, Jesus saves, that angers Satan. And God in his throne is happy and Satan can't do anything about it. Talk about perfect. There's no dead dogs. There's no, you know, Jew. You know, let me tell you about the Jew that walked, you know, there's none of that. That's the millennium. That's all about Jesus. 